Welcome to episode 5 of the RAG Austin 7 Special Suspension Project and this one is all about the rear links which are not in this picture and that is because it's on the bench and the focus of this episode is to basically finish the fabricating on, fabrication on these links so the first step is to raise this end on. So um, quite usefully, I've got a picture of the original here. And you can see in the original, there's a hole just here. I'm presuming that's filled with braise. So in order to get a decent join, you, you want the braise, it's like solder, to get sucked in to this joint. So I've drilled a hole on both sides and I'm going to heat this up with oxyacetylene and braise it and hopefully that should stick it together. And when I've done that, I'll be focusing on the other end and I've got to make some bobbins, bobbins, threaded bobbins, which I'm going to weld on the end. So let's, let's tackle this bit. So after a bit of brazing, it's on, but I have to confess that was a bit of a battle. I thought it was going to go completely wrong at one stage. Now I've got a slight sort of it's not a pinhole exactly, but it's a slight recess there, which is bothers me slightly, but it doesn't make any material difference, so I'm going to take it. Ironically, it does actually look rather similar to this one, which has also got a little bit of a pinhole. So I could say that I'm just replicating the, um, the original ho-hum. So that's one side done. Um, got to do the other side, obviously, but now I think it might turn my attention to this end. I've got to make a, a bobbin to take the... Uh, Rose jaw, which is at the other end. So I think that's next. So I've had a bit of quality lathe time, and this was the aluminium end bobbin that I made before. So now I've made um, this steel one, and the steel one is threaded, and it's threaded so that this can screw into it like that. And in Blue Peter style, here's what I prepared earlier. Of course, I have to make two, and these will then insert into the end of there like that and I just now need to weld these up so what I'm going to do is weld one of them and then the other one um, I'm going to adjust exactly where they need to line up such that the they're exactly the same length of course if if this is half a turn out then it'll be half a turn different length I want it to be at least the same length not that the tolerances on an Austin 7 are that great so yeah, next is, is weld up one of them fully and then tack or mark up the other one where to weld and then weld that one. As you can see, one side is now welded up and I've placed the bobbin in and put the pin in and rotated the bobbin such that I've got exactly 90 degrees there. Uh, so now all I need to do is mark these two points, take it to pieces, clean it and weld it back up again. So they're both now welded up, so it's now time to start screwing everything back on the car. So I've now fitted one side, and you can see in there I've made an additional brass spacer. So it all fits, and you can just see a bit of fresh air between the back plate and the uh, bottom bracket. So when I put this in, I estimated the length of this and I've set them both the same. So of course I now need to put them both on and put the under tray back on and make sure that the, the axle is still going up in the correct place. So that's the next step, put the rear section back on. So I'm trying to put the rear under tray on now and it won't go on. And that's because the slot, which needs to line up for the axle, um, is, well, the slot's in the right place, but the axle isn't. And it's because the radius link the arm is too short so I need to lengthen it by maybe a couple of turns maybe three turns and see if that then fits obviously got to do that both sides so a couple of turns and that did the trick and now it um, it lines up quite nicely in the slot pretty much where it did before plastic bags in the way you may have wondered what the big uh, yellow thing was that was sticking on there it's basically to stop me smashing my shin into the end of this 
uh, drive shaft every time I walk by. Um, starting to really hurt. So that lives on there. Uh, so what now? Um, all looking quite good. So I think I need to just whack the hubs back on, sit it on its wheels, because the issue I've got now is that underneath is a bulge for the diff. Now, because I've lowered the whole thing, I don't really need that bulge anymore, and it may actually smack on the ground. So I'm just going to see how low it sits with some 15-inch wheels, and that may need to be removed and and rivet on a closing plate. So yeah, stick stick it stick it on the wheels and see how it looks. I think wheels now on, and it's looking rather rather splendid. So these are the 16 wheels, and with 16 wheels, I've got maybe three inches of clearance there but i don't actually need that clearance because the diff is nowhere near the bottom of that uh of the rear under section now and when if i run 15 inch wheels then it'll be even lower so uh it's going to come off i'm going to take off that bulge and put a closing plate on so that'll be the next job i think So as if by magic, this has all now been cleaned off, leave a bit of paint stripper. It was only a very thin layer of uh, protective primer. I made this new closing plate. So far it's just uh, bolted on so that I could drill it all out in the right place. Uh, it'll be riveted on and of course it won't use pop rivets because pop rivets weren't invented in 1934. It'll use solid uh, rivets which will be another job. Uh, for, um, so we're gonna leave this for now, wait for the rivets to turn up, which I've ordered, and we're gonna go and check out some unintended, not unintended, but some consequences of lowering this, this whole thing down. So it's all very well lowering the ride height, but you've got to make sure that um, you can actually lower it. So this is the prop shaft and it runs underneath the seat. And this is, the level of the seat right there and what I found is that when I lifted the axle if I lift the axle now you can see what happens the whole thing gets higher and higher so what I've had to do is remove this piece of metal from here so I've got now got clearance for when that bit goes higher up there now um, what we're going to find is that actually this bit goes higher than the level of the seat uh, so I'm going to have to modify the back of the seat and put a little cover uh, but I can afford to have a little cover cut out for this bit here it's obviously that bit if that bit goes higher than the seat then I'm in deep deep trouble uh, so that's one of the things I've got to sort out I've already sorted that out I've got to sort out the seat the next bit is so this is the back axle looking underneath the car at the back and you can see what will happen when the axle rises and the key issue is that just here this brake line goes vertically and effectively hits the piece of plywood underneath the fuel tank so I've got to reroute that because that the, as it stands the axle goes up another probably two inches uh, and I'm also probably going to have to address that brake line and just generally um, make sure nothing hits so yeah next step is sort out that brake line and when that brake line sorted i can probably start to screw the whole thing together which is rather exciting so i've got a new brake line design now so this bracket is now much lower and the lines 
don't run over the top anymore they're going to run round the back there and underneath on the right hand side and this flexible cable I'll make shorter uh, but now I'm thinking the diff might actually hit so uh, to better safe than sorry I'm going to have to put it back on its wheels and just see how close everything is right it's now back on its wheels and I can see that I do have a clearance issue at the top of the diff. I can just fit my finger between the top of the diff and this plywood base. And I've only got to go over a bump or even sit in the car and it's going to smash into that. So the only thing I can really do is to make clearance is to remove some material. And I've got this bracket here, this aluminium strip I need to modify as well. So, which means I'm gonna to have to take the tank out um, and the tank's full of fuel, so I'll have to drain that. So, um, this is the project that keeps on giving. Time to take out the tank. Tank now out and, you, and I've undone this so you can see just here how close this is so what the plan is is to cut that out there and then cut a bit out of this bracket sort of there probably up there around and about somewhere still I can probably have it attached at the back because I don't I don't need to take that out so yeah a um, bit of plywood bit of aluminium rear tank mounting bracket has now been modified so I've obviously cut this big slot in it and in the wood and taking this piece out here so the, the diff can now rise right up into there so I've got probably another two inches of travel there which is about the same as I've got uh, here and where the axle rides up just inside there rides up underneath the chassis so time to put the tank back in I think tank now back in fill the cap back on the not massively fireproof rear bulkhead back in, so I might just offer up the seat now and just see, see it get a feel for how much I might have to take out of it. The seat is now in and I can see that I've got about three quarters of an inch between the base of the seat and the nose of the diff. So I will have to modify the seat, but not quite yet. I'll leave that. It doesn't stop, it doesn't stop the show. So what I think I'm going to do is all the suspension that's on, I'm going to take it all off, clean it all up, um, trim all the bolts the right length, etc., and put it all on for the final time. So here are all the bits. Um, the bottom, the main brackets, I was going to paint them, but I thought, no, I'll leave them in bare steel. I'll just put a bit of oil on them, oily rag job. Um, I've also cut a slot in the end of this pin so that and it lines up with the with the hole for the split pin so when you put it in you can obviously turn it uh, you know where the hole is going to be to line up um this is the brass washer that uh, space that to machine up um trim down these bolts for the front bracket trim down the bolt which holds the front bracket on this is the rear uh, the drop length of suspension uh, it was fouling on the side of the body, so I've just milled off uh, a slice to, to give me a, give myself a bit more clearance. So both sides all cleaned up, ready to go, all the bolts. So just need to screw it together. First side is now on. That went on quite nicely. Looking quite good. Time to put the second side on.
as you can see the front brackets put up a bit of a fight getting the nut on but that's all on now so next step is to stick on these uh, brake back plates which have been assembled on the bench because it's much easier to do it on the bench because it's like trying to assemble a rat trap with all these massive springs so yeah stick these things on now that's the near side back plate uh, and hub on it's all gone on quite nicely looking good so now the offside back plate hub and brake drum is on as is the uh, I've got the drum on the near side so now I just need to repurpose these brake lines uh, I might be able to reuse them or if not I can make some new ones but obviously and because I changed this I need to rejig these lines and the lines need to run below the axle where they poke out in this slot so that next and then when I've done that I can stick it on the wheels new brake lines all sorted out now so I managed to repurpose the old lines uh, I've shortened that flexible one because it's this it's the sort that you make yourself and this uh, copper goes round the back of the diff not over the top I've supported it on a bit of tubing there and it goes into the union just there so um, I think I'll stick the rear body section back on now and there you have it she's back on her wheels now rear section back on suspension is all on that's how it's turned out in the end all that work just for a couple of struts uh, i've still got to sort out the rear damper attachments i've got some bolts coming but i think um that's all for now that's all for this particular um well series i suppose uh, you may have heard that the the it's been pissing it down with rain here that still is uh, so as soon as the sun comes out i'll wheel the girl out start her up and take take you on a guided tour of everything and anything uh, under the skin of the girl um martha her name is um so if you are interested in seeing that subscribe and you'll get told about it when it happens um hope you liked it that's all for now